Hello, everybody. I am very excited to tell you about the new webinar that I'm developing. And, and really, uh, I owe it to all of you because I'm repeatedly asked these days about how do you apply this or that approach to a short-term model. I'm asked this particularly in countries like the UK, Canada, Australia, where there are very clear limits on the number of therapy sessions per year. Uh, it's certainly a problem in the US with managed care plans. And so it, it really seemed this is something we have to take seriously and we have to think how can trauma treatment be done in an economical way? I think one of the answers is it couldn't be done. We couldn't do a short-term model for trauma therapy with the way that we historically have worked, uh, starting back in the 1980s and 90s, when we, we first discovered trauma. Uh, of course, it had been there since the dawn of mankind. Um, but when we began to take it seriously and to see that so many, many, many children are traumatized um, in the context of their families, we began to take in the the incidence of domestic violence and to see that it was much higher than anyone imagined. Um, we, you know, we assumed as a field that Freud's talking cure was the answer. And if we could get survivors of trauma to talk about what had happened to them, that would cause an emotional catharsis which would resolve their symptoms. Certainly sounded good, didn't doesn't it? <clears throat> right? You talk about the event, you have an emotional catharsis, and then the weight of that event is lifted from you, uh, which seemed, as Freud reported, that seemed to work with what we used to call normal neurotics. But unfortunately, it didn't work for trauma. And, and that we now know, thanks to the neuroscience research, has to do with the effects of trauma on the body and the nervous system. And we also saw back in the 80s and 90s that when trauma survivors began to talk about what had happened to them, it was not a single event. Most people who are traumatized suffer from the effects of what Karen Sackvitney calls the enduring conditions of trauma. Think, war is an enduring condition. Child abuse is an enduring condition. Yes, there are individual events that occur but the impact of the day in, day out threat, you are going to be hurt. You are going to be made to fear for your life. Um, domestic violence, war, um, political unrest, COVID is an enduring circumstance, right? It isn't, even for those of us who don't know anyone, who has actually died of the coronavirus, we feel that threat. That threat is very, very real and present. So the, what, used, what happened back in the 80s and 90s was that as trauma survivors told their stories, there would be more and more and more and more events would start to flood up and many became overwhelmed, they became suicidal, they lost their ability to function. And it was clear that treatment was prolonged by that approach to therapy. 
because we would open up Pandora's box and the result could be years and years of a struggle just to survive, <clears throat> just to function and get through the day. So when I set out to create a model that could be used within the confines of brief therapy requirements, I immediately thought, well, of course, we can't use that old approach. We have to use the, what I'm going to call modern methods of trauma treatment. We have to use what we know about the body, the nervous system, the brain, um, and we have to be able to give the clients a certain amount of work, a certain amount of psychotherapy that can be contained within six or eight or 10 or 12 sessions, and that they can then take away and continue to use. So that's the model I'm going to be speaking about. It is a brief model that assumes that each year the client is entitled to another series of six or eight or 10 or 12 sessions. And so the therapy becomes brief but intermittent. And it gives the client a chance to do the work over time, which trauma requires, but does not require having therapy sessions every week for all of those months or years. So um, it was really challenging, interesting, and fun to think about what can we give people that helps them to understand themselves, helps them to tolerate the ups and downs and emotional reactions of day to day, and helps them ultimately to process their traumatic, the traumatic effects, not necessarily the events, but the effects, so that at the end, they can feel free or healed or resolved. So that is my intention, and I hope that you will join us for this webinar and become part of this conversation. <laughs>